everyone and welcome back to my channel hope you guys are all doing well if you are new here then don't forget to press the subscribe button to see more from me each and every one of us go through something that's called a writer's block at some point in life whether it's when you're writing your thesis writing an essay writing a novel just writing a text sometimes you just lose your train of thought or you just lose the motivation to keep on writing in today's video, I'm going to give you 10 practical steps that you can use to overcome writer's block. I've used all of them whilst writing my thesis <laughs> and they definitely work and I think some of them we take for granted and I think some of them we just don't realise is something that will actually help us. So keep watching if you want to see how to overcome writer's block. So number one keep on writing and do not edit. So make forward progress which means don't edit as you go. Just write. Whatever comes to your mind, even if it sounds like it doesn't make sense, just get that thought on paper. Do not edit. I think sometimes we end up with the temptation of editing and as a result we end up spending so long on one point and we end up losing our train of thought. So instead of trying to write and edit at the same time, just write. Now there are some apps that can really help with this and I believe there's one that's called Ghostwriter. I'll leave the link for it down below. Um, it's called Ghostwriter and it does not have a backspace key. There's a mode called the Hemingway mode that does not have a backspace key, which means you actually cannot physically go back even if you want to. Um, and that in it just encourages you to write without stopping, without editing, without thinking, just putting your thoughts to paper. A lot of the time, the reason why you have writer's block is because you're constantly thinking about what is the issue with my previous point? Rather than thinking about how to edit it and make it sound better, in fact, I would strictly encourage you not to even read what you've written until the end of a section. Number two, take a bit of writing that you've written. So let's say you've written a chapter and you're stuck on your second chapter. Go back to your first chapter and just reread what you've written. Read it aloud, read it to yourself, read it to someone else read it silently and just rewrite the sentences that sound a bit clumsy. This means that you're not actively trying to think about new information, you're, you're just working on what you already have so it should be a bit of an easier task and once you've done that you'll feel more accomplished and then you can move on to working on the second chapter. So just take a bit of work that you have, even if it's just a small paragraph, just take that, try to edit it, refine it as much as you can and then come back to thinking about something new after you finish that. The third thing that you should try to do is forget about the point that you are stuck on. Move on to a point that you find easy. Now let's imagine you're writing about two different aspects or two different methods in your thesis or your dissertation or your essay and one method you find quite tricky to explain, it's quite technical and it's making you end up wasting half an hour just sitting there just not knowing where to begin. But there's another method that's really easy, it's quite simple, you know how to write it, but it follows on the method that you don't particularly enjoy. Forget that method for now, skip it and move on to the method that you find easy. Whether that, whether that relates to an idea, whether it relates to just a different section in your, in your writing, just leave that bit that you're struggling on and move on. A lot of the time we tend to think that we have to write in order. We have to write the introduction first, we have to write the method second, and then the results, and then the discussion. But actually, I started writing my methods first, I had written my methods months before my thesis was even due, just because I thought, well, I quite like the methods, it's quite simple, it's quite straightforward, it's not going to change, let me write that first. And so when I actually came to writing my thesis, I had a nice method section that was obviously not edited and it wasn't great, but I had written something down that I thought was the easiest part. So definitely don't try to go in consecutive order because that will lead you to just feeling blocked in one section and then never making it to the next sections. The next thing that you could do, the fourth thing you could do is move on to something really, really easy. So let's not even get into writing. Maybe there's a diagram you need to draw or maybe you need to think about a title or maybe you need to explain a really basic theory that you know of by heart and you just have to collect a few papers. Do that really simple, simple thing. The thing that doesn't really require much thought at all, no editing, nothing. There was a point when I was writing my thesis that I felt really blocked and I just couldn't write anymore. So I just thought, hey, let me write my acknowledgements. <laughs> I hadn't even finished writing my thesis at this point and I just pulled out a new Word document and I said, all right, so who do I want to thank? Thank my supervisor, thank my parents, thank... And at least it got me writing because that's a section that I definitely know that I could do. And I also did the abbreviations as well. Again, section that I thought is really easy, 100% necessary, didn't have to do it at that point, should have really done it right at the end, 
but it meant that I was being productive, it meant that I was still doing something, I felt accomplished, and then I was able to go back and work on the bit that I was stuck on. So definitely would recommend going to a different section where you don't really need much thought, but you know that you, you, you can get it done in a short space of time. Number five, stop thinking about the negatives. I know that when you're writing anything, an essay, a novel, a book, whatever it is that you're writing, don't think about failing, don't think about the fact that this doesn't sound good, don't think about the fact that you have so much more to do and you're thinking about things that you haven't done yet, you're thinking about a diagram that has to be drawn, a graph that has to be analysed, you're thinking about statistics and you're thinking about how you're going to do a t-test on your data and the fact that it's not working, trust me, been through that, but you need to quit it, you need to quit the negative thought. So you can let go of that negativity surrounding yourself you can then stop yourself from being a barrier. At the end of the day, you have control over your own thoughts. Whether you believe that or not, you do. No one else can control your thoughts. You are the master of your own thoughts. So by telling yourself that I can't do this, this writing is bad, I'm going to fail, I'm never gonna pass this, my supervisor's gonna hate it, you're probably gonna manifest that in yourself and you're probably gonna end up with bad work. But if you tell yourself, no, this sounds good, this is great, I'm doing a good job, I can edit it later, um, I've got you know a few months left to write, right now it's the first draft. The sixth thing you need to be doing is adopting a ritual behaviour in your writing schedule. So if you've got writer's block, you need to think to yourself, how many times have I got up so far? If you've been at your desk for two hours, three hours, four hours, then you've been at your desk for too long and naturally you are going to be blocked. There's only so long that your brain can concentrate for um, efficiently without you then lacking. So it's really important that you think to yourself, well, I've been here for an hour and a half, what is it that I'm gonna go and do now? Go and get a drink, go and go for a jog, go and watch some TV, go and do something different, but make sure that you're scheduling that in. So tell yourself that every half an hour or every hour, I'm gonna stand up and get a drink. Every hour, I'm gonna stand up and talk to someone else every hour and do, make sure that you do that every hour. You are less likely to get writer's block because by the time you've got to the point where you're sort of starting to strain yourself a bit, you have to get up and do something. Then you come back and you're a bit more fresh than you were with, before you had just left. On that kind of physical note, the next thing I recommend is to do a chore. So if you are feeling like you're approaching writer's block, you've been in this block for minutes, hours, even days, do something different, go and do a chore, go and do some laundry if you're at home. What this does is it gives you a sense of accomplishment. It shows you that actually I can do something, even if it's something unrelated to what you are actually writing. It does kind of psychologically psych you up to think, well, I can do that, I've accomplished something today. By accomplishing something, you've allowed yourself to mentally feel successful. Uh, who doesn't want to feel successful? It doesn't matter what it is in. So by feeling accomplished, we allow ourselves to then want to bounce off of that and do another thing and complete another task to feel accomplished and complete another task. And that sort of sets the tone for the rest of the day. So do something or complete something that allows you to feel accomplished and then go back to your writing and hopefully you'll be in a better mood, a better zone uh, and you'll be more likely to, to get into the writing straight away. Another tip that I found really, really helpful that I was taught during my PhD is to just write about anything. So don't write about something that you are writing about. Write about a completely different topic. And one thing that, something that I wrote about was how to boil an egg, uh, or how to make an omelette, or how to boil a kettle, how to make a cup of tea. Something that has nothing to do with your PhD or your writing, but it's a skill that you are able to write about really quickly very fluently and without having to stumble. Now, one thing that you can do is set yourself a timer, give yourself 10 minutes, open a new Word document and just get writing. Talk about every single step, try to go into as much detail as you can, try to edit, try to make it sound really, really good, but just get into the flow. Make sure that you've got yourself writing. What can happen during writer's block is that you can get to a stage where you haven't written anything in about half an hour, you're just thinking, you're just sitting there, you're not actually writing. So your hands and your brain haven't coordinated in a while. And it can be quite hard to, to regain that coordination. Again, this is another technique where you are sort of teasing your brain in a way, you're sort of teaching your brain, you're sort of tricking yourself into thinking that you're writing. 
And lastly, if you are super, super, super stuck, what I recommend is taking some inspiration from someone else's work. Let's say you're writing a thesis and you're writing the, I don't know, the introduction section, let's say, and you're really stuck on how to introduce a certain topic. Go and look at a thesis that has written a similar topic or a research paper that has written of a similar topic and analyse their work. Look at how they've structured things. Really pick out as much as you can. Take note of their choice of words, take note of the choice of nouns that they use and the kind of language they use and the structure and then try to translate that into your own work. Never copy, that's one thing that I wouldn't recommend doing, but definitely taking inspiration from someone else's work is a great skill. This is something that I used to do a lot, definitely did a lot. I would ask a postdoc or my supervisor in the lab for an example of work that a previous student had completed and then I would sort of look at it, try to understand the structure, try to understand how they'd written everything, try to understand the layout, and then sort of take inspiration and write my own uh, essay or my own dissertation, my own lab report in a similar way. So I really hope that I gave you some useful tips to be able to overcome writer's block. It does not mean that you don't have the knowledge, it does not mean that you're not a good writer. If anything, some of the best writers, some of the best authors on the planet have experienced writer's block, it's a normal, it's a completely normal thing, it's definitely not a reflection of you or your capabilities, just take time out to realign your thoughts, to realign your emotions and then come back to it with a fresh mind and you'll definitely be able to complete it. Don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know about any other tips that you have used or that you'd recommend for overcoming writer's block, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next one, bye!